Hi and welcome to this new video about uh, stations and cue codes. So this is going to be a video series containing two videos. The first video is going to be about uh, what are stations, what are they useful for and how to create them manually. And in the second video, we will go a little bit into the details of how to create a station using a so-called YAML file and how to make sense out of snapshots and how to compare different snapshots with respect to each other and saving them in a database. But this is just like um, a very quick change in our um, experiment. Okay, uh, so first of all, a little bit about the stations themselves. So what are they and what are they useful for? Well, stations are actually components that are contained in Q codes and they basically group together different instruments and channels and so on in order to make your measurement itself a little bit more structured. Um, that sounds pretty abstract. So just uh, think of an experiment like a simple hall bar experiment. And usually when you look at your cryostat or your setup, you have probably a lot of different instruments. Um, and usually when you import all of these, you also contain all of these in your snapshots. That means that you, first of all, will record a lot of data, which you probably don't need. And then also, if you perform a snapshot, you get a lot of metadata, which makes everything just messy because just imagine you had a current source, which has like four different uh, outputs. Mm. Then if you perform a snapshot, you get the metadata for all the four different outputs and you probably only need one uh, for your experiment. So you have a lot of mess going on there. Uh, and that's where stations come in handy because they basically allow you to pick, uh, uh, to pick um, single components also from different instruments and group them together in a station so that you're only, that you're only left with the stuff that you need. Um, so how do we actually create them? Uh, first of all, we start as always with an empty Jupyter terminal on Jupyter uh, notebook. Um, and I will first of all start by basically copying everything um, that we are usually also using. Um, and just a little bit of a side note here. So as always, all the code that I'm producing here, such as all the code of the other tutorials is contained in the GitHub repository, which is always linked below the video. So just go in there and have a look at that. You will also find further comments on the code and uh, explanations. So if you have any question, uh, which may not be answered by the video, maybe also just have a look at the GitHub repository. I'm constantly updating that. Um, as always, we start by importing um, Q codes and I'm using autocomplete, which basically means I press the tab, uh, the tab button as QC. Then I'm basically using all the different uh, packages that I'm that we also used in the uh, experiments before. So I have a dummy instrument, a parameter and the elapsed time parameter. Um, then I want to create two different instruments, which I'm calling source one and source two. So these are basically dummy instruments, as you can see here. Uh, they have the names source one and source two. And they have two different gates. So the first one has gate one and gate two. And the second one has gate three and gate four. Um, furthermore, we also have some different parameters. And I'm also just going to copy these from a former project um, in here. Okay. Um, so these are basically the... Uh, Oh, here in the label, there's still a number missing. Okay, uh, so these are basically my parameters. So I have the elapsed time, then I have the v1 applied parameter, uh, which has the name v applied one. The label v applied one is in units of volts, um, and it basically means that I'm using the uh, source one instrument that are defined up here, uh, and the voltage one that is basically gate one. And the same holds true for uh, voltage applied to. And then I have the I measured, which is basically the sum of uh, V1 and V3 divided by 1000. That's just how I define it so that we get some kind of um, yeah, value. Okay, this should, if I run this, just go as usual. Uh, usual. There's nothing new over here. Um, so how do we actually uh, get into this whole station story now? How do we import station? Um, I'm just doing that up in the first uh, cell of my terminal so that I can keep things a little bit more clean. So I say um, from Q codes import 
station. So station is a class that is contained in QCodes itself in the uppest directory. So let's uh, restart it and run it again. Okay, and there we have it. Um, and now from that class, I want to create an object. And this basically works um, oh, by saying station, that was one autocomplete too much, uh, equals, and then I say station class, uh, open close bracket. Okay, like this. Um, this would initialize an empty station now, but I can also already add the components that I want to create my station with. So basically I could also just go ahead and say, I want to have the parameter I measured as part of my station, as, an, as a component of my station. Mm, and this basically uh, works like that. I'm just running it and now the station is created. And I can also prove to you that my um, that the parameter I measured is included in that station uh, because the station object has a uh, has this components uh, with it and if I run that I can just see okay the components that are contained in my station so far are I very important to mention this is this I and not I measured so this is the parameter I um, and it also tells me that this is from the class parameter and then I get a pointer over here um, now let's say I want to dynamically adjust the, uh, the components that are contained in my station. Like if I wanted to change something during the experiment, if I want to add or remove components, if I run some kind of automation and my station needs to change, then there are also uh, functions which help us to add or delete components. And I will show you how that works right now. So basically you say station dot add component and now I can just add any kind of component let's say I wanted to add my source one then I just go ahead I get the feedback over here that source one is added and if I run the same print command once again I see okay I have the current that I had before but now I also have source one which is of the type dummy instrument so this is the class up here um, and yeah, that's source one. Okay, um, now that I have source one in there, uh, let's say maybe I also want to add the uh, elapsed time parameter because uh, up to now I only added a, uh, an instrument. Let's say I also want to add a parameter. Well, that works basically the same way. I just say station add component and then I add my time component and basically that works the same. So if I run that uh, print command just once again, you see that now I have the time included as well. Of course, I can also delete parameters from the station that basically works by, by saying station dot remove component. And then I just say which component I want to remove. And let's just say I wanted to remove I measure because this is an interesting example of what doesn't work. Uh, because if I run that, I receive an error. Mm. And actually, I have to say at that point, um, I've recorded this video several times already today because there was always something wrong with the microphones and the camera. So bear with me that it works this time. And that's also why I know that this is causing an error. Um, but what is the reason for that? Well, actually, uh, even though we import the parameter I measured here, the parameter is handled by its name from that point on. Um, that means if I want to remove that component, I have to use it, I have to call it by its name. And this is not I measured anymore, but it's I. So if I run that, it works fine. And if I now print the components that are contained in my station, you can see now I have the source in here and I have the T parameter in here, but the I parameter is not there anymore. Okay, the nice thing about stations, and this will become more important as we go towards automizing the process of initializing the stations using YAML files. Um, the nice thing about them is that we basically control all the different components that are contained in the station by just controlling them. Uh, that's also abstract again, so I'll just give you an example. If we wanted to know the time, the time parameter before, we would just go ahead and do this, which basically is the same as uh, time.get. So if I wanted to get the time, 
could also just say uh, t open close bracket and then I've received the time. But that means that I have to control it using the time parameter. So this is um, not containing the station now. But since I imported it into my station, I can now also use the station object in order to receive the time. Um, how does this actually work? Well, I can just go ahead and use my station. So I say station and then I just say dot t and now I'm talking to the t value that is included in my station and then I'm also getting the time. So in this case I'm using basically the station as a wire in order to get to my t um, and this is of course uh, useful because stations can be created automatically. Um, okay, but that's just like a little bit of a side note. Um, what else can we do with the station? Well, we can get a snapshot, for, uh, the snapshot from the station, which basically collects all the metadata uh, that I use in order to document the measurements. So in order to get that one, and this is also recorded during each measurement, as I will show you in the next video, in order to get that one, we say station.snapshot. And if we do that, we basically receive a snapshot which contains all the data from everything that is included inside my station. So you can see here we have the source one. Uh, it tells us which class we actually used in order to, uh, so basically which class we used in order to construct this element that basically helps us to know which driver has been used. We get the date, we get uh, the firmware which has been used and so on and all the different parameters that have been uh, initialized before. Um, of course this is not really helpful if you are if you want to run a measurement and you just want to know what happens with my how do my instruments actually look like um, how, how did I initialize them. This is not really human readable right because it's uh, a little bit messy. It contains a lot of information but it's not really uh, easy to read. Mm, and in order to make that a little bit easier, there's a different way of uh, doing so. Let's, for example, say I wanted to know which parameters did I set in my source one, in source one. Then I just go ahead and say station dot source one. And then instead of, uh, of saying snapshot, I say print readable snapshot. And if I run that, I receive this snapshot, which is much easier to read and which only uh, contains the information uh, that I probably want to know when I initialize my experiment. So I can see here, um, for example, which firmware has been used, serial connection, then I see which voltages are applied to gate one and two, uh, and that's basically it. Um, and that's also it for this first video of this uh, station tutorial series. As I said, in the next video, we will talk about the YAML files and how to automatically create stations, how to uh, use snapshots in order to find errors that may occur during uh, several measurements uh, in a row. Um, and with that, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.